Alright guys, I got something for you today. We're going to be making some straw, uh, basically a item that we can then use for crafting recipes such as uh, thatch roofs. Uh, we'll be able to use it as feed, animal feed and stuff like that, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff that we'll be able to uh, later expand on. So I wanted to play around with the texture. I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but I know that I kind of wanted it like a bundle kind of of straw so um, I started working with just like a rough outline like this and then um, I worked on you know trying to make it symmetrical so it would be a little bit easier to use like work on it later on and then I just kind of started kind of sketching out the outline of the actual texture. Now I'm using a kind of a mid shade for my texture itself. I'm adding a little bit of noise on the sides just to make it look a little bit more natural and not so symmetrical. And then I wanted to started working start work on the um, shape a little bit more. So for an example I needed to move everything that that was on that side a little bit more in. And then I started adding a little bit more detail work on the shading. So Shading is really important when you're working with your items. Uh, gives depth and a bunch of other details as well. It can be used not only for detail work, but it can also be used for like showing like a uh, dimension and stuff in a 2D image. Um, it's very important when it comes down to the art world and you know planning out where your pixels, especially in pixel art, where your pixels are going to be because you have very limited amount of space. Um, and then same with uh, lighting and stuff like that, like your brightness. You want to make sure that you have a good brightness layout and try to maximize the amount of space that you actually have. So, for example, I needed a darker shade for that bottom part, so I just started adding another shade for that. And I was pretty happy with what my first result was, but I needed to figure out a good pattern for it because it's such an odd shape to work with. But I know that I needed, you know, something that was kind of, uh, that kind of blend in with the rest of the thing there. So, I, again, I was just trying to get the right shading and going in and out, like zooming in and out, will actually help you with a whole bunch of stuff, seeing um, how it looks on a further scale for something smaller, as well as um, give you the overall shading, which is really good for... Um, when you're actually working with something like this. So now I'm just basically filling in some of the holes. Um, I didn't want all of them in here. Uh, for example, like some of them could have probably have not been as holy, but um, you know, adding some depth like that is sometimes all right. Uh, I just wanted to fill in most of them because I'll, I have some other plans for this. And I had to retexture this part up here uh, because it wasn't exactly doing what I needed to with the uh, filling part. So I played around with this a little little bit, trying to get it just right and uh, zooming in and out with the um, perspective. It helped a little bit, but I then had to figure out what I was going to do with the shading on this side. So I wanted to work with the detail. Uh, like I said before, you know, there's a lot of detail that goes into uh, making one of these and uh, I started playing around with the shading a little bit more and I decided to kind of go with an outline that goes around like that and I started playing around with the pixels a little bit just to see how it would look and I decided to connect it up like that. Eventually I determined that having that one pixel there was actually way better than not having it there. So it just gives it a little bit more depth uh, when you're actually adding like the darker shading and stuff, even if it is in the lighter zone, right? So, all right. So then I needed to add a little bit more detail because this looks okay, but I mean, it doesn't really give much description of what it actually is. So I wanted to add kind of like a blue ribbon and we already have a palette that we're basically working with. So I wanted to just grab some of the palette colors and just add a little bit extra detail in there. You know, I have a um, th basically a thatch or yeah, like a straw uh, bundle. So we can basically go ahead and save that texture and then we can move it into the uh, Amp Creator application and start working on the mechanics for it in just a second. So we need to save that and we will go over to M Creator, and I have that on my desktop at the moment so it's easier to 
import because wherever you save it, you need to know where to import it from. So I added it as an item and then I went to uh, created a new folder for uh, this particular item and I needed to create the item so I'm just going to call it straw the other ones the block that we're using is called um, something else I can't remember it's like a two variable thing but it's I was going to add some detail for it like some description for the item and then I'm just like yeah no I, we don't really need that so I ended up deleting it all um, because I didn't think we really needed it if we decide to use it later on we can always do that but um, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to use it. We don't need item states for this one. Um, and I just basically left all the settings pretty much the same here. Um, didn't need to add too much for it. Uh, just went over the properties and stuff like that. Thought about adding an animation thing to it, but didn't really know if I needed it or not. Um, then all the other settings are pretty much just left alone. So I just saved it and it's just basically a generic item but we'll be able to use it for crafting and animal feed and a bunch of stuff later on so that'll be really handy so um all right so the next thing that i needed to do was make sure the mechanics for the uh hay blocks the the ones that were actually for the um dropping this item were set up so i was originally going to have it um, drop the item itself and uh, set the thing but I decided to go with the loot table at the end uh, because that would give us more options over um, how the how the item is actually dropped and stuff like that and then I needed to kind of sort out where I was, all these things were going to go because we haven't been into the creative tab editor for a while we have a lot of content for the uh, dimension so far I'm pretty impressed with the progress that we've been doing and I was just sorting out this stuff a little bit more so it was a little bit more um, organized and I thought about moving some of the previous blocks down but I ended up resetting it so it was the same way just because it was already set up pretty good. So the only thing that I did move I think was the uh, kiln recipe at the end and or the kiln block which basically spawns the kiln but um, Outside of that, I was pretty much just happy with how it was set up. I just tried playing around with it a little bit more so it would be um, more organized. But, you know, sometimes you think that it needs to be a more organized or something like that, and then you find out that you just made things worse. So I ended up putting everything back in the end and just uh, worked on the moving the kiln somewhere else because it doesn't really fit where it needs like fit right there where it actually should be. So... I did move the kiln, I think, right next to the stone thing, right between the ore. Yeah, that's where I put it. So, and then that way it's just, you know, kind of still within that kind of block texture range and it still looks good. But, um, yeah, basically that's where I decided to stick it. And everything else I think was pretty much good. I thought about moving the leaves, but I didn't, so... This will only take a second to update and then I needed to test in game I think I think that's what I did next I'm not sure so it's just going over the properties again and basically I oh yeah that's right I ended up moving this to a loot table so basically I could basically um, set up the properties I thought I tested it between then but I might have not uh, at this part so I ended up just creating a new loot table and then we could basically go ahead and create the drops for the item itself like because if we're using silk touch on the particular item I want it to drop the block itself but if we go ahead and you know use something like fortune or something like that then I want to make sure that we'll be able to pick up the straw so that's kind of really important for actually the mechanics right so that's why I'm using a loot table for this and I'm just setting up the mechanics right now for basically setting that up so um, basically with silk touch what we will drop is the the block that um, we're basically right clicking on for the one that without silk or without silk touch will basically drop the item 
And if we have fortune on it, then it will drop extra items as well. So that's always a nice little feature to add. And it should drop straw by default. So hopefully that will be the case. All right, in game, I just wanted to kind of test this theory out. I have a couple axes just to test to see if we're getting more items and um, just make sure that it's set up. It is dropping items, so I'm assuming that it's working. And uh, we did get a couple extra items for that one and uh, just to check the regular item. But you might notice that the actual axe isn't taking any damage, so we're going to have to tweak that a little bit and make sure that the axe gets a little bit damage when it's breaking that particular block. So we'll have to set up a global variable. So exactly no damage on these two items, but we did get a whole bunch of hay so or straw. Um, I didn't call it hay because Minecraft al already calls like hay blocks and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I, I just wanted something a little bit more um, different, uh, something more unique than what Minecraft used. Now, when we actually go ahead and build that structure, like eventually we'll go into building structures and setting up some more unique uh, things that we can actually do with them. Probably even go as far as making some uh, jigsaw block structures now that uh, we know how to make them. But, um, you know, randomize some things, stuff like that. But at the moment, um, I want to get the straight, the straw uh, blocks in, which will probably be in next episode so we can work on the roof because I wasn't too sure what to do with the roof and it just blends in too much. So this will take a couple minutes to actually turn to straw grass, like the, the straw grass or whatever, the piles. And that's great, but uh, we also need to make sure that we can um, get a whole bunch of other stuff done. So like grass should grow between the two and I was thinking about how this actually should work and I'm almost thinking that you know if they're if the grass grows uh, it should be near other grass so maybe we can adjust the mechanics in a future video but right now I wanted to create a procedure to make sure the axes are uh, set up so we can actually use the uh, tools any tool on it and uh, basically break the block and give us damage to the item. So basically created when block broken and then a main hand item created a if statement and went ahead with um, wanted to see if there was a block for basically um, if it, it has it's damageable and there is already a block in here that can do that. So we can just basically Put that like that and then we can go ahead and um, create a damage and we'll just set the damage to one for the main hand item and then we also need an end statement so we're going to test if the block is a specific thing so we're going to use block state for that one and we're going to go ahead or because we have two of these blocks and i wanted to test um what was it? The comparator block, put that in there. And then we just need a selector for testing for our blocks themselves. So we can go ahead and select these two. And that's all we needed for our script. Pretty simple, straightforward, and works pretty good. So I already tested it. I know it works. So I uh, just needed to adjust a few other things. And one of the things I did notice was basically that there's none of those um, water water crystal things generating. I'm not sure if uh, they generate now, so we'll have to create a new world and just double check that in the future. But uh, our, we do get damage on our items. I'm going to go into creative and just uh, grab a couple new items for this and we'll test it, get rid of those old ones just to make sure um, the damage uh, is working and everything. So we'll go ahead in here. I have an ad Advil already placed in here that we can temporary, temporarily use. It's not going to be part of the structure, most likely. So, All right, so we'll go out here, and uh, we'll just set our game mode. I'm trying to figure out what keybinds I need, so there we go. Survival mode, and then we can break that. So we do get damage on those, and... It does look like we get damage on all of these. So that's perfect. 
Uh, I wonder if the grass ones... Now, I just wanted to know if we're going to be able to damage this item completely or if I have to add ex additional script for it. So I ended up um, just putting down more grass like this. Eventually, we'll use a sickle for this part uh, of the process, but um, at the moment, we don't have that kind of thing built in. Uh, I just wanted to see if I can not damage the item and... Short story, uh, it is possible to damage it. I ended up just breaking the regular grass and it drops the actual grass pile for it. So that allowed us to place them down other places. Now, the reason why it's a little bit slower to break those ones is because uh, it, it's needed for basically swapping the block out, but you can see it breaks the item. So that's perfect. All right, so that's basically it. Um, I don't think I did too much more with this particular thing, uh, this project for today. I got what I wanted done uh, implemented, so we can always move on to the next thing, which is going to be the straw blocks, or hey, I think we're going to call it thatch, probably, thatch blocks, and it'll have stairs and stuff like that, um, blocks, forms, slabs, stuff like that, so we'll be able to uh, do a bunch of stuff with that, but... Um, you know, I just wanted to set up something a little bit different for the properties just quickly. And that was basically set a specified item for basically breaking these items. And I'm going to set it to be an axe. They don't really have shears or anything like that. Or I would have used shears for that particular item. But um, we can see that if we leave it at zero, it should be able to. And I made it sure that it was a required item. So we can't just break it with our hand either. Uh, that's kind of important. So if we try to break the um, thing with our hand, it will just basically destroy it, which might be handy in survival for players that don't want to get that particular item all the time. So, all right. So that's basically it. Um, again, we still have some bu bug testing for the crystals. I'll have to create a new world and uh, see what's going on there. But um, so then I'm pretty happy with the progress. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.